Okay, so let's talk about the concept about uh, degree of polymerization and the number of bonds. They are quite a proportional to each other, but the concept is different and the notation of symbols that we are using different. And it is a very simple concept, but the, sometimes the notations are got mixed that up. So we are going to, this is, uh, we're going, I'm going to make this slide, this video to to clarify this. Degree of polymerization is number of repeating unit. And the number of bonds is in essential number of carbon and carbon bonds. Right? So this bond is number of carbon and carbon bonds, and this is a small n. And that we call uh, degree of polymerization a DP. Also, sometimes uh, in many of the textbooks, uh, they are using uh, capital N compared to uh, the lowercase n for the number of bonds. So let's let's talk about just uh, simple-minded uh, pictures about polyethylene chain. This is essentially repeating of CH two CH two in a long chain form, and this is what we call polyethylene. And the people in polymer chemistry community uh, decide to acknowledge repeating pattern, repeating pattern by putting in a bracket. And then there's to acknowledge this is actually came from polyethylene, CH2, CH2. It can be uh, polymerized in, uh, into polyethylene by radical polymerization to make low density polyethylene. And high density polyethylene can be made using the some sort of coordination metal catalyst. And at any rate, this is a polyethylene, and then it's pretty typical people to write this one this way. And this is a very common notation to acknowledge their repeating unit. And historically, people just say, oh, this is a repeating unit, so they just use a lowercase n. And that's where the complication of this uh, repeating unit versus dp and the size notation that we are using it here. For the argument of, you remember from the previous lectures, and we are using this number n. This number n is a number of bonds. So for to be consistent with that, this is actually not n, although in many cases people just using n. This is essentially trying to represent number of repeating unit. And sometimes people use a capital N here, and that's the one that we're going to use this chapter throughout. So, so let's let's give an example of uh, the different kinds of molecular weight that we need to use and to clarify this. So we are going to calculate uh, what is called the molecular weight of repeating unit. This is a m naught, and that will be essentially 28 gram per mole because there is a two carbons and four hydrogens, so you can calculate. Each repeating unit, essentially this is a molecular weight of repeating unit. And then I have a question then. Okay, so we remember using the imer. And this imer, let's say I'm just choosing the number saying, okay, I'm just choosing 10,000 gram per mole. If it is a case, I want to know how many repeating units. So number of repeating units, which is a dp, What's the value of dp? So all you got to do is dp value here is 10,000 gram per mole, and each repeating unit weighs 28 gram per mole. So therefore, this one is about 358 degree of polymerization. So what the, uh, that's the number of repeating units. So, so dp of 358 repeating units. You have that. And so what about N? Which is in this case, if you see that there is a one carbon-carbon bond and then there is a another carbon-carbon bond connecting those. So if I go go to the previous one, if I just use a highlighter here, each repeating unit essentially has a one, two. There are two bonds per repeating unit that is repeated. So therefore, I can use that 
uh, the, uh, that idea that, okay, in this case is two times degree of polymerization. So therefore, uh, that's the number is 2 times 380, 358. The sum at 9 to B, 716 bonds. So that the polyethylene looks like here. So from for this one, I can even uh, elaborate that. Okay, so the one that 10,000 is essentially MI, that we call I-mer, and how many mers you have. In this case is uh, MI, uh, 358 mers, right? This is a polymer with that many mers. And, but this is a polymer with twice as many bonds than the number of repeating units. Okay, so uh, there's, I would like to give another example uh, before. So, but once again, I this is a, this is n is number of bonds, carbon carbon bonds, and remember that's the notation we have. And so now we are using big N later on when we describe the statistical segment unit uh, later in the lecture. And that is essentially same as DP, okay? Or number of repeating unit. Okay? You know, we are supposed to write this way, right? This is what the true meaning of degree of polymerization but notation-wise, many people just acknowledge this is a repeating pattern and there are so many numbers and that's a historical one. And this N and this N is not the same. They are not the same Ns. So please remember that this is just uh, for historical reason for to be consistent within this lecture. This is essentially big capital N, not the small N. So let's give another example. This is a styrofoam. We are using the uh, uh, made by the styrene monomer. This is a polystyrene. And you can see that the whole calculation comes from the calculation of M0. And this M0 is essentially, I got six carbons, and then I also have six hydrogens, right? So by cal uh, not, not six, one, two, six, eight, eight. I got eight carbons and eight hydrogens, right? So if you calculate that, that will be 104 gram per mole. So a good rule of thumb is about repeating unit for many of the cases. It's about 100 gram per mole is a good number to remember. And for the same one, so if Imer has a 10,000 gram per mole, you can do the drills, right? So the, how, what is the DP here? Is 10,000 divided by 104. That's about close to 100. To be exact, 96 mers. So this polymer is essentially MI. I is 96, if you want it to be, have an exact form. And so the number of carbon-carbon bond is twice of the DP here, same as the polyethylene cases. So in this case, is 192 carbon-carbon bonds. Okay, so in later, uh, it's going to be important to how many carbon-carbon bonds do you have in different monomers, and this is going to be used in our description of what we call the the end-to-end -end vector distance. So this is end-to-end -end vector distance that we describe is, uh, do you remember that uh, h square this in the previous lecture is nL square and L is 1.54 angstrom for carbon-carbon bond and that's a number of bonds. So you can plug that in, plug that in and for uh, uh, completely flexible coil. And in the re real chain, and h square is, there is a, some correction factor, which is characteristic ratio we're going to uh, uh, find out from the um, materials table. 
But what really uh, changed the size of the polymer chains here is the number of bonds. How many bonds do you have? What's the size of bond is already pretty much the fix. What is the characteristic ratio will be, we'll find out from each different polymers because this has something to do with the flexibility of polymer chain. And that's an end-to-end -end distance square. So it has a measure of the polymer size.